Hello and welcome to our Hands Online webinar. My name is Paul Reimer and I'm with the AIM Center and I'm here with my colleague Aileen. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We're so glad that you're here with us today and we're just really excited to uh, share the next hour with all of you for this Hands Online learning session. We are uh, at the AIM Center, we are committed to working toward a more equitable world through math and science education. And one of the ways that we're committed to doing that is through making online learning hands-on, uh, valuable, exciting, and engaging. And you can learn more about our work by visiting our website at aimcenter.org. And just a few details along the way today, you can use the chat and the Q&A features to ask questions and to share your progress as we uh, play and learn together. And today in particular, we're here to build a shape viewfinder. So shape viewfinders are tools that help learners of all ages develop spatial reasoning. Aileen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Can you share a bit about what spatial reasoning is and why it's important? Absolutely. So spatial reasoning is a skill that we might not necessarily hear as an academic subject like we hear math and we hear science and we hear social studies, but spatial reasoning is one of those skills that's embedded in a lot of the sciences and mathematics. And so spatial thinking or reasoning involves um, the location of shapes or objects around you, so how you move physically through them, but also has something to do with how we can visualize shapes in our mind and um, how we can navigate our bodies through things, but also navigate visually what that might look like or how a shape might rotate. And so it's one of those skills that's really um, embedded in a lot of the science fields, but we don't necessarily hear a lot about it um, as a subject in like school when we're, when we're going to classes. Right, right. And, and also today we're going to be taking some time to to really explore the idea of making things together. And so like, why do you think making is such an important part of learning and an important part of spatial reasoning too? Well, I think in mathematics, when we think of just mathematics itself, you know, geometry is a really big part of the mathematics we learn. That has something different to do with our number sense, but more of our ability to recognize shapes and then compare shapes to one another. So making allows us to not only apply some of our spatial skills because we have to use our hands and our eyes. Sometimes we visualize what we want and then try to um, attain that by how we're making something, but it also allows us a little, some autonomy. So in, in the um, process of making, we might be following some instructions, but we might be able to adapt it to how we want it to look. That might be a little bit different from maybe the original source or the original um, maker. So it allows some autonomy, but also to apply a lot of skills. And I think it allows someone to be creative and innovative. And I think that that's part of the process of making is just to create and be creative, but also to think about how we can improve something and learn by that process of, of making. And I think making is something that is embedded in so many skills that we do, whether we like to cook or we like to sew or we like to um, do a sport. Um, there's a lot of ways that we are makers where we try to adapt things or, or um, create a different function for things. And I think that this allows a, a young child to make the tool. And that's really exciting because um, making can be a process where you can be creative and use a lot of your spatial skills as well. Yeah, that's great. I, I remember talking to my grandmother about all of the different kinds of making that she did. And a lot of it involved um, canning different fruits and vegetables, making different kinds of clothes, making different kinds of furniture. So as you said, it sounds like making has been around for a long time and now we're finding ways to really integrate it with learning both in school and out of school. And that seems to be really important right now, especially as um, we're really looking for ways to uh, encourage learning outside of the classroom experience. And so um, I think that is a, it's a great way to really affirm that learning happens in our everyday environments and it happens through the, the ways that we interact with the materials that we have and the kinds of things that we can make and build. 
Um, that's fantastic. So Aileen, today we're going to be making a tool that can help us focus our attention on the shapes. I mean, this is called a shape viewfinder. So it really has to do with shapes, um, the shapes in our environment. And it will also help us to interact with ideas about space and distance and shape and movement. So can you tell us more, Aileen, about the shape viewfinder? Yeah, so today, um, this is an adaption of a lot of ideas, but it really is a way for um, the child to make their own mathematical tool. So in school, you're probably introduced to things like a protractor, a ruler, um, you're probably introduced to calculators, I mean, we're getting into electronics, but there's all sorts of mathematical tools that we use that maybe have been used for a long time historically by mathematicians, but then ones that are innovative and new ones that are being used right now. But it's always interesting to think about the ways that we can create a tool to kind of focus in on something. And so the shape viewfinder is a way for children to start not only recognizing the shapes in their environment, because in their environment, there are several amazing shapes all around and but also the ways for children to expand recognizing those. So a lot of times what a, child, a young child is exposed to is a very strict or rigid set of shapes. Maybe they're, they're on a flashcard, maybe they're in a book or on a poster, and those aren't necessarily wrong. But like, for example, triangles, there's so many different kinds of triangles. So a lot of times children um, are misguided or get the miscommunication that that's the only triangle that there is maybe they're in their book Looks and so they like kind this of have, right <laughs> yeah definitely like that equilateral triangle and so they have this definition like those are triangles and they don't expand that definition so the shape viewfinder is a way for them to start seeing the shapes that are different varieties but also in different orientations so a rectangle, for example, if you see a rectangle, that's um, the shape of your door, right? And that's more of a vertical orientation. But then you might see um, a horizontal uh, rectangle that might be your table or something else like that. If children only see one orientation, they might think one is correct and one is incorrect. So it kind of for young children starts expanding that, um, that vocabulary, but that recognition of shapes. But then as child gets older, they start noticing more of the characteristics of shapes. Like what makes a rectangle different from a square? And why are the angles different in this triangle than they are in another triangle? And that is great because out of that curiosity can be a lot of great discussions with young children about sides and angles. And those are what they need to learn as they grow um, into the academics of mathematics about how they compare or contrast them. So uh, in, on the slide, you're seeing the shape viewfinder used for two different shapes. So the circle is pretty easy. And I would recommend that if you're doing this with a young child, you start off with a circle. Because a circle is a way, is that one shape that doesn't necessarily have sides. And you can pull in or move the shape finder away from you to match that circle on your shape viewfinder over the shape that you see that's a circle. But on a rectangle, depending on what you draw on that shape viewfinder, your rectangle might be, you know, thinner or wider. And that hopefully will allow for some of those conversations that I mentioned, where a child can think about the attributes of a rectangle and how one might be different from another. And that's definitely great for them to start seeing those um, characteristics in a shape. Yeah, that seems really important. And I'm just thinking about, I'm looking at your your example of the circle with the clock and just thinking about how um, all circles are, are really very similar, aren't they? They're just sort of either smaller or larger. And, and I wonder if with the viewfinder, you could, you could actually see smaller or larger circles, but with the rectangle, I see your point because rectangles can, they can be very broad on the base but not go very high, or they can be very, very thin this way and go very, very tall. And so you might have to do some um, movement with your shape viewfinder, and you may not actually get to match it up with some rectangles that you see in your environment. Absolutely. And if you think about what we just said about spatial reasoning, it's not only the child looking in their environment and finding the shapes, but also that movement of the shape finder is exercising that spatial reasoning. How do I match that you know, um, uh, overview of that shape 
onto the one onto the object how do i move it closer to me and farther away from me and how that affects that that viewpoint or that perspective and i i noticed too that you also are suggesting a way of using the shape viewfinder to just to sort of put something into focus that could be counted and is i mean is that's what's happening here Yes, yeah, so the shape viewfinder can be used for other things. I think we can think about um, drawing lines on it. We can think about parallel lines, all kinds of shapes. Well, if we want to bring in some number sense, there's ways that we can adapt it. So in this shape viewfinder, we just have the word how many, but you can, you can alter that. You can have the, the word three or the number three and have the child look for groups of threes. So now they're doing some counting, they're seeing what groups are, or you can have it over something and say, how many are in this, um, this frame? And so it's a way to kind of expand the use of the shape viewfinder and be creative. I'm sure a lot of people out there are thinking of other ideas that they can do with something as simple as this. Right, I love the way that it frames, literally frames something to focus attention on in the environment. And it reminds me of when, you know, when you go, when you start doing something like, oh, I'm gonna um, repaint my house and I'm gonna really think about the color. And then every time you drive around town, you start looking at all the colors of houses and that's your now your frame of reference, that's your attention. And this does kind of the same thing. It focuses your attention and it gets you starting to think about something and then really looking for that in your environment. That That's fantastic. Yeah, okay, and that so, brings up a good point, like with color. So if you have a young mm -hmm. child who's recognizing their color, maybe right. put that on there like blue. You could have yeah. discussions for the different types of blues that are out there, light blue, darker blues, and really have um, some great um, activities around the house where your child is actively engaging, they're moving, they're not just stagnant sitting down, um, but they're also really exploring their environment, it could be outside or inside, and just having some focus and engagement around just exploring and learning. Sure, right. Oh yeah. Okay, well, um, I think I'm about ready to get started. So let's make sure that we have all of the necessary materials uh, ready to go. And so for this project, we are really trying to harness materials that could be available in, uh, in a home or things that you might be using for other purposes. So we're really looking to see what kinds of things that we might be able to have. So I'm gonna go over the list of things here and see if what we have. So looks like we're going to need, first of all, some cardboard. So I have this sheet of cardboard right here. And then looks like we also are going to need some tape. I have a, some uh, clear tape, uh, I have a marker, I have a pair of scissors, and I need a bigger table, <laughs> and I have some plastic wrap. So these are the things that are needed, and if you are making along with us at home, we'll give you just a few moments to grab those things if you don't have them with you. And uh, then we'll get started in just a bit. But let's talk a little bit more as you're gathering those things. We'll talk a little bit more about the materials. Um, Aileen, what have you found about the kind of cardboard that's helpful? Yeah, so definitely we wanted to think about how we can reuse and, re and use maybe a recycle bin. And so I know some of the people who I've shared this idea with have run to the recycle bin and kind of um, looked at what they have available. So one of the first, um, shape viewfinders I made was one that was from a straw box. So on the straw box, there's already a little window and there's, and that happens in some of our other things like pasta, I think comes like that, where you already have a window cut out, I mean, um, set for you with a plastic uh, view and you can just cut around that view and make a viewfinder. So that would be like the most yeah. easy way to do that. But other ways that I found the cardboard being used is just like your cereal box. So I, right. you know, I get my cereal box and I save it and I can use that for a viewfinder. Um, some of your frozen food items comes like that or crackers. So just thinking about the ways that we can reuse um, materials that we, ne we um, ordinarily recycle is, a, is an idea. Now we can use plastic wrap like you mentioned, but mm -hmm. other things that I found that also worked are like, you know, my bread bag. So my bread bag has a nice 
clear area where I can use that as my window pane so I can write the shape on there. Mm -hmm. um, hot dog buns and or hamburger buns have a nice clear view window that you could use that. So there are other ways that we can get that plastic piece that we want to put as our um, plastic piece to draw the shape around. So, you know, just think outside the box as you're, as you're um, thinking about the things you're going to use to make the viewfinder, you might have something in your, in your recycle bin that that's usable very quickly or something that you might save later on to make the viewfinder and all of those work really well. I really like the thinner cardboard from like a cereal box is because we're going to have to cut that window out. So with younger children, especially, we don't want to necessarily use the, the thick cardboard from our cardboard boxes, but maybe the thinner cardboard from cereal boxes or food boxes is a little bit easier for them to cut. Right. That makes a lot of sense. I have an example. I found I was looking at the, the tissue box. And so this is an example of one that's sort of already made. It's got a clear the only, the only thing is it does have a slit here where you would pull the, the tissue through, but I figured I could just put a piece of plastic tape down the center and then I could use this as well. So it's sort of a, a ready-made viewfinder. And then I did use the Kleenex box and I have the plastic wrap and the clear tape. So uh, I think I'm about ready to go. Um, hopefully those of you who are making with us at home have some materials ready to go. So. Um, I think we're ready to get started. So Aileen, how do we get started? All right, so we're gonna um, go ahead and get started right here. And I'm just going to switch over to my camera with my materials. So the first thing we wanna do is you wanna cut out a rectangular piece of your, your board. So for example, this came from a cornbread stuffing box. And so I wanna cut out my cardboard um, probably a rectangular piece. I've noticed that younger children like bigger viewfinders. And that was just from um, teaching this and, and having uh, the, the opportunity to observe young children. So that first thing you want to do is just to cut out your rectangle. And so you might want a bigger one if you have smaller hands. They, they, they tend to like that bigger view. Um, but if you want to use um, just a smaller one to get started, you can. And you have some lines already on your, on your card stock or your cardboard that you're using. So it's really easy to just follow those lines and um, young children can get some practice with their motor skills. I know that that's one of the things that they learn um, in kindergarten and preschool is just to start cutting. So if we follow those lines here um, around that, that box already, we can just make one more line. And really, if you want it to be precise, you could fold it so you could follow that line, or you could use a ruler to make that line and, and follow it. Um, I would let young children kind of explore at first, especially if they're younger, they don't cut very straight. We might want to make that line for them. But um, it, I think part of this process is just for them to practice and to just get better at the skills that it takes to, to make this. Um, and just to let them um, have some freedom and autonomy. I think young children like to do things for themselves. I have a young five-year-old, so that's what I've noticed with her. So cutting out that rectangle is the first piece. And of course, you know, using those, those vocabulary words are important at this point. You know, we're gonna cut out a rectangle. Do we know how many sides a rectangle has? What, what shape is a rectangle? Have you seen one before? And so that's the first um, step that we want to go to is that rectangle piece. Now, the orientation, like I've showed in my examples, really is about preference. And, and I've shown the examples that you see from the slides were for a vertical orientation. So what I mean is, after you cut out this rectangle here, you want to then draw in where your window is going to be, right? And so think about the orientation that you might draw that in, right? So these are two examples, one vertical and one horizontal. It's, it really doesn't matter which, but like I mentioned before with young children, it's good to switch up that orientation and for them to see things in different perspectives. So this would be your second step is drawing that um, with a marker or pencil around where you're going to have that um, space that you're going to have your shape drawn into. 
Now, a lot of this will depend on how big your viewfinder is, but if you're not using the plastic wrap, you want to make sure that your plastic piece that you're going to use is going to be able to cover that space. So you might want to measure how big. So it's, for example, here's my plastic, it's kind of hard to see, but I want to make sure that that's going to be able to fit over that space. That makes a lot of sense. So I can just imagine um, it could be even fun to eventually have one of each of these shape viewfinders and to kind of go throughout the home or through the, the outdoor space and really sort of see which, um, which one seems to work better because it could even help children get the idea of, of kind of things that are, are longer and shorter or things that are taller. And so you can really integrate a lot of that vocabulary, it seems like, the way that you've described it in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the whole point of this process is really to have the process of the making be part of the whole activity. And I think that mm -hmm. that is what is really powerful about something like this. When you're making your own tool, you can kind of think about how you want your tool to work. And, and it might not be something that a child does at first. You know, they might make one like this because they want to do exactly what you're doing. But then the set in the second round where they're making a different one, you might ask them, do we want to change that up? What do you think will happen if we change the rectangle to be, you know, long ways? And so that, that's another way we can start talking about what they're doing. So after this process, now this is the part where you might need a, an adult to have a little bit more help, um, at least for starting, because we have to get our scissors in, in between that space. So with younger children, I usually like start it out for them and then let them cut because getting this first space here where they're getting to the edge might be a little difficult for them just because cutting against that space is a little hard. So maybe start cutting that for them up to there and then allow them to follow inside. This is another great spatial reasoning um, skill to practice because most children only get the experience of cutting out a rounded shape and very rarely do we get that experience of what it's like to cut inside of a shape and what's left inside of it. So I think that this is a really good um, way for them to just get some practice on what that's like and, and not assume that the, the experience that a child has is always the same. So cutting out that window and trying to think about what um, What's, what that space looks like when I'm done. And the negative and positive space that we're really talking about here and young children getting to experience that is a really, um, a really good thing. I think it's beneficial for them to see that. Yeah, so, it was actually a little challenging for me too. So <laughs> it's obviously <laughs> beneficial for some adults as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so even if they make a mistake and they might go over and accidentally cut that edge, you know, you can always use tape and, and fix that up. That's, that's an easy fix. But then just, again, getting their motor skills in and getting to practice that is really important. So in the next piece, when you think about putting on the plastic, remember that this is your kind of front side of your, of your shape viewfinder. And this is your backside where, your, where the box um, logo was or the graphic was. So you want to turn it around and you want to work from the back side is where you want to put your plastic because you want your tape and everything to be on the back side so that the front side you can do your writing and, and drawing your shape. So at this point you can figure out what plastic you're going to use. If you're going to use a plastic wrap piece, the children might need a little bit of help because that tends to be a little bit sticky. But if you're going to use a plastic from like um, a bread bag or something like that, that tends to be a little thicker and a little bit easier for younger hands to kind of fit over. And then just get some pieces of tape and allow the, the young child to kind of um, put those together and, and tape those down. I'm going to actually cut this a little bit shorter. So I've got a piece of plastic on mine that is bigger than my frame, but I'm thinking that I might just tape it down on the corner to start with. And then maybe I would trim it up afterwards. Yeah, that's definitely a way for, for it to work. Just trimming around, around the viewfinder when you're finished. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the tape side can go on this side. And then when you turn it over, 
is where you have now your plastic. You can see your window here. Um, and you have enough space down here for you to write the name of the shape that you want to try. Now, like I said, it's really great to try maybe a circle first because that's the one that's a little bit easier to um, move and get the perspective of the overlay of the circle. So what I've done is have um, young children just go on a little scavenger hunt around their house to find something that's in a circle that they can trace because drawing a perfect circle can be very difficult um, to draw it freehand. So drawing um, a circle might be easier if you go around your house and try to find something that's in the shape of a circle that you can trace. So do we want to take a few minutes just to do a quick scavenger hunt and maybe let everyone go find a circle real quick and see um, if they can find something that'll fit yeah. on their space? Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, I'm going to go hunt for a circle. We'll give everybody a uh, a minute or so to find a circle and then we will come back with our circle that we can trace on our on our uh, viewfinder. All right, well, I found something really quickly because I was taking a drink out of my water bottle and lo and behold, my water bottle has a cap that is, is a circle. So I'm going to put that down on there and I'll trace that and, and hopefully that will work out just fine. Perfect. So some other things are buttons. So if you have a big button around that works. Um, large coins, a quarter or a half dollar would work. Um, just buttons that you would find to, to wear, wearable buttons also are nice circles. Um, even if you have um, tape dispensers, the inside of a tape dispenser or, you know, any, anywhere that they might find a circle that they can trace is a great way for them to, to just get that prelude of starting to look around their environment for a circle. In this case, they're, they're making that viewfinder, but that it kind of gets them exploring in, their, in the world around them and what they might trace to actually create a circle. And that's a great way to also practice those um, spatial reasoning skills. Definitely, that makes a lot of sense. So little ones might need a little help just to um, trace that. Maybe holding it down for them would be great for an adult to help them just hold that down while they work around that. Um, I would recommend Sharpies because you are drawing on a plastic, so you want it to be able to dry quickly so it doesn't get smudged. And then um, go ahead and help them. If they're um, younger ones, you might want to write the word circle or if they're older, you know, help them spell that out. But having them to be able to hear the word, see the word, and see a picture of the word is a great way to start emphasizing the um, definition of a circle and really getting into those aspects of solidifying that definition and, and um, knowing what that means, what that looks like, and what it sounds like. And so it, it really just... Um, reinforces all of those attributes for a young child. And feel free, if you speak a different language, put, put circle in whatever language, home language you have, because that's um, very powerful. We want children to um, embrace their home language. And so siculo is, is okay to write there as well, or whatever language you speak at home. And so emphasizing that shape with the home language is something that's important. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that sounds to be like a great experience that can really, um, harness and, and draw, at, draw out as uh, assets the various cultural resources that children and families have in their homes and to really use those as sources of learning, uh, which is an important, very, very important approach, especially in, in today's educational landscape when 
we're, we're really relying on uh, a lot of out of school learning to take place. So I, my circle uh, shape viewfinder is all ready to go. And before we met today, I was really excited about this and I wanted to practice a little bit. So I also made one that is a triangle one and it's a little bit hard to see. Let's see if I can give it a little bit of a background there. That doesn't help at all either. It, this is a triangle and I think maybe you can see it's kind of a right triangle shape. So I'm gonna go have some fun with this and I'm gonna go have some fun with the circle viewfinder. And we're actually gonna take some time now for those of you who are making along with us at home to go into our homes and or our outdoor areas. And as you use your viewfinder, look for some different shapes that are in your environment. And you might wanna notice a few things along the way. So we just encourage you to notice how your body is moving to find shapes and match them up with the shape on your window. And to think, are there different ways that you can do this? What shapes work? What shapes don't match? What do you notice and what do you wonder? And then if you wanna share photos of what, you, what you're seeing uh, online, we encourage you to do that. We have a few uh, hashtags that we'll share in, uh, on a slide here in just a moment. And we'd love to follow along and see the different shapes that you're making. So we're going to take a five minute break right now. And during this five minutes, we want to encourage you to use your viewfinder to go into your own home and to, uh, to look for those shapes that you can find and noticing those different things. So again, we have just a few um, ideas that we thought you could use as you play along. And so we'll put those up as we go to our five minute time. So again, try some observing, try some noticing, be creative and do some wondering. And so we'll see you back here in about five minutes. Sounds good.
Okay, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we hope you had a, a good time uh, playing either in your home or in an outdoor space. Um, Aileen, as I went through uh, the home, I did a little bit of searching for some things that I could see that would match my, uh, my triangle. And so I thought I would just share a few of those. And it was sort of interesting because when I started, I didn't I didn't find a lot of things. And so I had to be sort of creative with the kinds of uh, shapes that I was looking for. So here's an example of what I was able to find. The first thing I found was I found a piece of art on the wall that had some triangles in it. And so I, it wasn't a quite a quite a perfect fit, but I tried to overlay my triangle as much as I could. And I saw that there was a right angle. And so I really liked the way I could see the right angle in the picture. And then I could also see the diagonal of the triangles. Now, because of the way that I had it lined up, it didn't perfectly fit, but I thought it was interesting. And, and then I went, I found another um, triangle. I have a shelf on the wall in the bathroom. And I saw that, that it had two triangles, two right triangles on the sides and then it has ledges that hold up the things that are on the shelf. And so that one was kind of fun because it really fit pretty nicely in that, that, same, that same shape. But then I kind of got a little bit more creative and I, I found a, I had a picture on the wall that had those kinds of triangles that you described at the beginning of our session together. The, the equilateral triangles where all three sides are the same length. And my triangle was a right triangle where all three sides were not the same length. But when I turned it upside down, I noticed that it covered half of the equilateral triangle. And so it kind of went right down the middle. So I could almost envision if I had a second one of my viewfinders, I could have turned it the other way and I could have made that whole triangle shape uh, within my viewfinder. So I kind of thought like, well, that might be interesting to think about how kids see parts of shapes or a shape within a shape. And so um, that was my, that was some of the play that I, that I came up with. Yeah, those are some great examples. And I think just having you share each of those pictures is another great example because experience of doing something is part of the learning process, but reflection and communication is the other part. And we need to make sure that that happens. When our child comes and shares, the things that they found or how they're the same or what they notice. Those are some great um, discussions that happen about mathematics that don't necessarily occur um, naturally, but the shape viewfinder can help um, open those up and help those, that process to just unfold for a parent and for a young child. And a young child might not have all the vocabulary like you were sharing um, at the onset, but we can start introducing like when they say over here or that that thing right here, um, we can start giving them that vocabulary so that they can expand their vocabulary, but also help them with the communication process. And that's so valuable when young children have the experience and then have time to reflect with someone else who's communicating with them, who they can have that discussion with is really valuable. That makes a lot of sense. So um, if you had, if you played along with us at home and if you had a chance to, to use your shape viewfinder in your home or in your outdoor space, we'd love to hear how it went in the chat. If you want to add a comment in the chat, or if you have a question about the experience and you want to add that in the Q and A, um, we'd love to hear how it went for you. And so um, Aileen, let's talk more about um, using the shape viewfinder with children. So what other suggestions would you have for um, interacting with kids as they use this? Like maybe starting with what, what might adults or parents or family members, 
what maybe could we um, observe as children are using it? And then other maybe questions that we could ask kids as they're using this. Yeah, definitely. So um, I would encourage you to do it on your own first. What we've learned at the AIM Center, what we know works is that we all are learners first and having that experience as a learner is really valuable as well as just taking the picture. Um, I don't know, Paul, if you notice, but having the viewfinder and overlaying it with your um, shape that you found, but then trying to take a picture of that is <laughs> that another level. That was not level. easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And as an adult, we start seeing what it means when we talk about spatial reasoning and spatial skills when we add that layer. I don't know if that's necessarily what we want a young child to have right at first, because that might add a, a layer of frustration, but depending on how old the child is, maybe that's another thing that we can add is taking pictures of your viewfinder. Um, but definitely as a learner, try to experience that first that gives you a little bit of the insight and creating one. And then when you come alongside your child, remember, and I know that a lot of parents um, and maybe teachers are kind of uneasy about the role that we all find ourselves in now where um, we have some distance learning happening, some remote learning happening, but we can really leverage that for a lot of great discussions. And around these activities, we know that the role of an adult is so important. And you don't have to know all the names of the shapes or know all the you know, vocabulary. It really is just providing that encouragement, that support. And let's look that up together. Let's see what a triangle like that is called, you know, and really um, embracing those moments with your young child. So I would just start observing them, start looking at where they're trying to find shapes. Maybe they're not considering all of the options. And so getting them used to exploring, like if they come back and say, I couldn't find any, then say, well, did you look here? Did you look here? And just giving them some guidance is a great way for them to start exploring mm -hmm. their environment. This may be the first time that they've even considered finding triangles in their environment with, with some kind of a focus. So it might be a first time for them. It doesn't mean that um, anything's wrong or they're missing any you know, foundational skills, but just getting them used to the experience and broadening their horizons is a really great, great way to do that. And, uh, and, having, and really listening to the language that they're using. Um, I think that that's really important. Um, what kind of language are they using? Are they, are they trying to find the words but can't? So let's kind of feed them those words. And then um, also um, the home language. So if in your home language you want to, to give them some of those attributes for corners or sides or looking those up in a different language. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can just embrace those conversations and those moments, but really getting that experience as a learner is important and then watching and listening to what young children are doing and where they're looking and what they're saying is kind of the indication of what maybe they might be thinking and how we can support them in, in an activity like this. Yeah, I think those are great suggestions. I, I noticed that in the chat, some folks are talking about doing an octagon and how challenging an octagon would be. And um, yeah, and, and that maybe we have to sort of get out of the home into the wild a bit to share and to find those types of shapes. And so, um, and, and maybe I think too, it could be an opportunity to look for shapes in nature. And as you pointed out that we might be able to build vocabulary around some of the, the scientific names of the parts of plants and those kinds of things. I also noticed too, for my, with my triangle that sometimes I actually with the triangle, I had to flip it over and I had to look at it this way. It's sort of like a backwards way because it made a totally different triangle that had the corner uh, on one side. And then when I flipped it over, it had the corner on this side. And I couldn't get it to look like the way I needed to just by turning it. By turning it, I, was, I, got, a, I got a different a different shape of a triangle, but I actually had to flip it over to get the triangle I wanted. Where I thought with the circle, is a very interesting shape. As you turn the circle, it sort of stays like a circle. You know, it doesn't change shape. And then even when you flip it over, it's still a circle as well. So it's this shape has a lot of properties of, of symmetry, which I think is a very interesting uh, spatial reasoning kind of a concept that, that, that could really be something that um, 
you know, we talk a little bit more about, or that is an opportunity for kids to learn about which shapes look the same when you flip them over, which shapes look the same as you rotate them, and those kinds of conversations too. Absolutely. And we'll see children um, do that when they're doing a puzzle. You know how they try to fit a puzzle into the certain space and they're turning it. Um, those are the same kind of spatial reasoning skills we're practicing with those um, shape viewfinders. And what we might notice children doing is flipping it or turning the viewfinder to kind of fit that. And those are some great things to observe for a young child to do. Right, definitely. Right. Well, it sounds like um, sounds like we had some fun making in in the chat, and we had some uh, some things that didn't turn out quite right. Um, uh, Van Rashi says that uh, she actually cut a shape as a shape viewfinder, and I did the same thing on my very first time too. I cut the shape out, and so. Um, but I think it's important also to understand too, as Aileen, I think you've already mentioned today that. In making, in making this, there really are no mistakes. There really are opportunities to create something and to, uh, to try it out and then to sort of realize and recognize, oh, if I wanna see through it, I've gotta have the shape on the clear plastic so that right. I can see both the shape and whatever object I'm looking at behind. Whereas if you just have the shape and you're seeing the shape and you might be able to overlap it with something, but you won't be able to see both at the same time, which is really one of the affordances of the clear plastic that's on here as well. Right, and, and I like the suggestion for even more complex shapes like the octagon, um, making maybe a couple of simple shapes. I got to do this with a nine-year-old and she, and we had a discussion. We didn't have you know, the time to make another one, but I said, what, what is it like a more complex shape that you wonder you can make and find around your, your environment that might be difficult? And she said, Pentagon, like, I don't think there's a Pentagon in my whole house. Mm -hmm. So having that curiosity of the other shapes that might be in your environment is a great way to kind of spark that curiosity, spark that, that conversation. There might be a Pentagon in her house, but she's never tried to look for one. So that's a way for them to kind of explore the shapes and, and what's different and what's the same about them. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Great. Well, um, I think this has been a fantastic uh, making session, a fantastic hands online session. Aileen, I want to thank you so much for bringing this activity and this idea to us. I think it has so much potential for uh, engaging young children and families in spatial learning and spatial reasoning, uh, both in the classroom, but also in the home, in the outdoor spaces and really recognizing and valuing the, the different sort of ways that we can see mathematics in our everyday environment. So thank you so much, Aileen. Absolutely, thank you for everyone for joining us. And we're always um, interested in how you use this and maybe the creative ways that you um, adapt to your own environment or your own children. The conversations that you might have because of it are really interesting. And so um, we're, we're really trying to embrace these moments together of, of at home learning. And we're trying to do it together in a very joyful and playful way. We believe that that's how mathematics can be taught and embraced. And so we want to come alongside you and support you in any way we can. Thanks, definitely, definitely. And uh, we wanna invite you to join us um, next time in September. We'll be using a round object like an old music CD or a plastic lid uh, to create a spinning marker. Uh, so the spinning action of things and old fashioned tops have been interesting for, for many, many years. And they do, they have their fantastic way to explore different physics ideas, even for young children, the idea of spinning and movement. Uh, so we're very excited about this. We encourage you to visit our website to join us for this webinar. You can register again, and uh, that'll be in September. So we hope to see you back then as well. We also have an activity guide for this uh, activity today that we, that we did, the Shape Viewfinders. And you can find that activity guide and other activity guides also on our website at aimcenter.org. So if you would visit that site, you can see more resources and be in touch. We've uh, thoroughly enjoyed our time with you today. We encourage you to, um, 
to stay in touch. If you have social media, share photos of your work or send us an email uh, or visit our website. And if you subscribe to our website, we will send you updates about future events and free resources that are available. So again, I wanna thank everyone for your time today. Uh, I wanna thank Aileen again for introducing this fantastic activity. And we hope that you all uh, continue to have many opportunities for hands-on learning, both online and offline. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.